during my uh, pg exit exam i had uh, watched uh, one of the marrow cardiology videos it was on heart failure with preserved ejection fraction it was a free video so i i happened to watch that and i was really impressed the about the content in the video and the way uh, things were carried out and how uh, clear the concepts were and how things were simplified so i was imp- really impressed with those videos and i looked forward to watch all those videos uh, many more videos at least for my knowledge sake so um, so i started to watch all those videos and eventually i, I watched all those videos initially it was around 4 uh, to 5 hours sir so i seen 4 to 5 hours per day yes sir yes sir after that i picked up speed and at the end again when i had notes in my hand i used to do like uh, i used to watch video for some, videos for some time and then read notes or solve MC- mcqs for some time so that you don't get bored so welcome friends we are here for maros first ins cardiology topper interview session we're going to pick the brains of our topper here so it as teachers it makes us feel proud when one of our students has achieved something great and now we are here with uh, Dr. Enosh, who's achieved rank two in the Common Merit List and aims rank six in the first ever INSS Cardiology 2021 exams. So, welcome, Dr. Enosh. So, a bit of the introduction. Dr. Enosh uh, did his MBBS from JIPMA. He is a 2012 batch. He did his M- MD General Medicine, also from the same institute, 2018 to 2021 batch. And now he's cracked the code. He's cracked the most prestigious. super specialty exam in our country the INISS he is now ranked 2 and he has he is in a unique position he can choose whatever institute he wants whether it's aims chitra jipmer pgi you name it it's the world is his oyster right now so we're going to pick his brains and find out what makes him tick his strategies and how you guys can improve on your preparation so welcome dr enosh thanks a lot sir that's an amazing introduction i ever heard So congrats doctor first of all congrats is in order congrats doctor you know you have achieved something great okay Thank something you, you can be proud throughout your life and uh, so you know what was your yes. when did you come to know about this and what was your reaction on knowing that you have topped the premier entrance exam in our country uh sir actually i was more expectant after because initially they told the results would be out by december 11th or something Okay. but but they actually have not announced the ranks instead they just put up the qualified list so we were after that we were expecting uh, ranks every day but uh, it did not happen so i stopped expecting the result but to my surprise on christmas night actually i came home for christmas uh, it was good day and at around 11:45 he came to you know about this news and i was absolutely shocked actually my friend actually called me and told uh, but i i told i not believe this so instead <laughs> i checked myself uh, around 4 to 5 times and then i was uh, very so, happy uh, so again it's it's a great privilege to become uh, i mean the topper of the country so uh, let me ask you a question when you are md medicine you can choose a large number of super specialties why cardio why did you choose cardiology specifically uh sir i was not Uh, very focused on uh, selecting a branch uh, during my pg uh, itself but i always liked to read cardiology because it had more of clinics uh, it needs your clinical assessment analysis and then uh, the extreme parts like uh, echocardiography and all those interventions and it also gives you that adrenaline rush especially when you save the life of the patient so i think uh, because of this mixture i like cardiology the most the same thing for me also it's huh. not only medicine it's also interventions it's yes, on sir. your face you can immediately save a patient's life patient comes to you in pulmonary edema you do an angioplasty the patient recovers within the next half an hour to one hour so that was what attracted me to cardiology also so uh, before that uh, how how do, how was your exams so after you finished your uh, theory paper the mcq disc- mcq paper what was your impression on the mcq how was it a tough paper was it an easy paper and how much did you expect to get correct um sir actually uh, uh paper was quite tricky sir because options were really close though the topics were same uh, but the question the style of questions that were asked was actually different so it was like a paper full of traps so uh, definitely after the exam after seeing the recall like uh, because of the mistakes some kind of mistakes were uh, really avoidable also so after seeing those things i i actually i did not feel very good for few days but then anyways it is about relativity so 
exactly it's not only how well you do it's how well the others do yes sir yes sir so it's the same talk uh, everywhere so how many questions did you attempt there were 80 questions around sir, 50 from cardio and 30 from medicine so how many questions did you attempt sir i attempted all 80 sir all 80 so all 80. you attempted all 80 so i think you would yes, have sir. got 49 right 49.33 yes sir so around uh, nearly around 58 to 60 you would have properly got yes. correct right yes sir. yes sir yes sir. So, with an expectation so how was the interview now now you have not only the first stage you have the second stage for aims also so how was yes. the interview sir uh interview actually because i had to take for 32 people i guess it was uh, of a shorter duration so in that 10 minutes uh, they would actually ask few questions maybe some five to six questions and they will assess you and uh, questions were actually uh, of uh, a normal standard so they're not really high five questions so they were really answerable yeah so uh, f firstly so how did you prepare for this super specialty exam? So everyone is eager to know what is the topper secret. So how did you prepare for super specialty exams? So yes. how, what did your seniors say? You're from an institute. So you'll have a rich pedigree of people going in for uh, super specialty exams. So what yes. did your seniors firstly say? How you, sh you should prepare? Uh, sir, actually, our in Jipmer, especially to clear the MD final exam is really tough. So we would never think about uh, preparation for super speciality during the PG days. To to pass in this exam only is kind of uh, difficult. So so only after the uh, our final uh, exit exam, uh, I thought about super speciality. Initially, it took one month break in August. Uh, then I the start... exams got over in July. Ah yes, sir. So August. So you took a break in August. Yes, sir. Okay. August I took a break. After that. Uh, after my mind had settled, I thought of, okay, uh, doing uh, super speciality. So I had actually interest in uh, some interventional branches. So it was either gastroenterology or, or cardiology. So I went ahead with the preparation uh, for gastroenterology. I, I actually saw marrow videos for one month. They were really That's amazing. September. Yes, sir. September. September. Uh, September. And I was preparing for uh, uh, gastro. And meanwhile, this patterns have changed, neat pattern has changed. They told it's uh, gen complete general medicine. So I had read general medicine also during that time. So it was, it was basically I've done marrow MCQ uh, question bank from general medicine and uh, I'm on marrow notes. And wherever required, uh, I referred Harrison here and there. And, uh, and apart from that, I prepared core gastroenterology from videos mainly. Uh, but I was not feeling, I did not feel very happy at the end of one month that I was missing a lot of, lot on cardiology. So somehow I changed my mind and after one month I switched to cardiology. So after that, I pre for the next two months, I prepared fully cardiology. I did not touch medicine in between uh, because they told it is INISS and uh, it is a major chunk of questions will come from cardiology. So, and I, since I had a very less time, so I had prepared only cardiology, uh, but uh, thing is, the my seniors had told the conventional way of uh, reading Braunwald twice or thrice before exams, which I felt was definitely impossible, at least uh, to me. So I thought I thought I should uh, do whatever is possible, whatever is practically possible for me. So I no one has suggested Maru, but then it was uh, during my PG exit exam I had uh, watched uh, one of the Maru cardiology videos. It was on heart failure with preserved ejection fractions. It was a free video, so I, I happened to watch that, and I was really impressed the about the content in the video and the way uh, things were carried out and how uh, clear the concepts were and how things were simplified. So I was imp really impressed with those videos, and I look forward to watch. I look forward to watch all those videos, uh, many more videos, at least for my knowledge sake. So, um, so I started to watch all those videos, and eventually I, <laughs> I watched all those videos, and I made notes. I made notes of all these videos, and I started to uh, do Braunwald uh, based assessment and. Uh, and also previous year's questions. So that is how I actually revised. I did not have much time to revise so, uh, my notes again and again. So you started um, using Marrow in September. Yes. At the sir. end of September, beginning of October, you switched to cardio. Yes, sir. So it was basically two months of cardiology preparation, October, uh, November. Months. Yes, sir. Exactly. And in that time, you could finish seeing all those videos. Right? Yes, sir. You finished yes, all those videos. I and you could all make notes also. Yes, sir. Were you able to revise? Ah, yes, sir. Sir, I was able to revise, but it was not like I read again from chapter one to uh, exactly. at the end. Uh, but I instead, my revision strategy was 
focus main on mainly on seeing the previous year questions and uh, brown world based assessment so so reading that simultaneously i had gone back to my notes cleared my concepts if i were a little weak i would go back to the videos again and watch so it was like that sir exactly so very important point here is dr enosh was able to cover the entire marrow cardiology videos in a period of 2 months so and he was able to make notes and do a bit of revision from the mcq banks also so how many hours did you put in doctor for uh, for e- each day for looking at videos um sir uh, videos like initially it was around 4 uh, to 5 hours sir so i think 4 to 5 hours per day yes sir yes sir after that i picked up speed and at the end again when i had notes in my hand i used to do like uh, i used to watch video for some, videos for some time and then read notes or solve MC, mcqs for some time so that you don't get bored or uh, uh, let me bored. ask you a question so you made your notes extensively so yes, we have we have request from a lot of subscribers to provide notes so what yes, is sir. your opinion on uh, marrow notes for cardiology uh sir i would recommend it for people who don't have real, who really don't have time to make notes but then actually what i feel is when you are actually making notes it is that you have understood whatever is uh, said in the video and then whatever is taught so that you are able to write in the way you can actually understand and revise it better later so even writing notes is kind of revision so, so when I you think writing we... making my do own notes think... is help help me sir so enosh at any point of time did you feel that the videos were too vast it was too extensive that you would find it difficult to complete the entire thing no sir no sir actually uh, seeing at the like duration of the videos only i was more motivated to finish it off so they were really concise to the point whatever is required in the exam and uh, the videos were were carried out in a, you can actually it it is very smooth uh, they uh, i mean sir will usually inculcate uh, uh, sir will actually uh, put in more of uh, interesting facts uh, some histories so actually i like uh, watching those videos at least for uh, uh, like learning the history of cardiology yeah exactly so uh, enosh how was yes. uh, um, marrow helpful in you gaining knowledge about the subject of cardiology the concept linkage you know you have to link between various specialties and uh, was it fun and uh, was it uh, was it a joy for you to learn cardiology ah uh, yes sir yes yes uh, it was definitely a joy for me to learn cardiology seeing those videos because i thought initially it was not uh, possible for me to finish in two months and then give exam so i was uh, at the back of my mind i was actually thinking okay i would give my good try for may so i actually watched those videos not in the exam stress but i since i wanted i had a lot of doubts in my mind so and those answers are actually available in the videos so it was more of a pleasure for me to watch all those videos sir one of the important uh, concepts is you know enosh made was enosh would look at the duration of the videos first right yes sir before yes, sir. you approach the video you would look at the duration of videos so it gives yes. you an idea for example you take a topic like atrial septal defect pearl of gives you 50 pages there are at least 50 pages on pearl of about atrial septal defect and it does not cover the management but if you look at atrial septal defect in marrow it's around 80 minutes so you know you have a target at 80 minutes you know that you are going to complete atrial septal defect but pearl of 50 pages is very difficult to complete it because all these textbooks whether it's brown wall whether it's pearl of whether it's spark they are not written for md uh, general medicine or pediatrics guys they are written for super specialists they are written for practicing cardiologists or people who study cardiology that's why the videos come in it makes it much more simpler it gives you a target that is 80 minutes you can finish this topic within 80 minutes it makes it much more easier for you am i right enosh yes sir absolutely sir so what topic did you start with were there any particular favorite topics for you to learn in cardiology like heart failure stemi congenital heart diseases uh sir i started with congenital heart diseases sir because okay, I, that's yeah, the pain of most md guys right yes sir i always felt so, that i had like uh, less clarity about uh, understanding congenital heart diseases so i watched them first so okay so uh, you have read brown wall enosh uh so uh, not much sir i i would have read less than 10% of brown wall only what about harrison sir harrison i had read during my uh, pg days but uh, again for revision i did not use harrison it was instead uh, marrow notes that i had used for uh, revising medicine yeah. 
so that was uh, marrow medicine notes right yes sir yes sir exactly so i think in ma marrow cardiology notes which is going to come up next it would be a great help during revision so Definitely. Uh, Ian, uh, what about pearl off and park your standard congenital heart disease textbooks uh, sir i i had not touched them literally exactly so our congenital heart disease is a very important uh, part of your syllabus especially when you are writing institute exams those are rank determining questions so many it's a many people don't study congenital heart disease they find it very difficult it's a rank determining uh, subject especially there are many questions in congenital heart disease and they are a pretty standard level you won't get it if you read even brown world so there is there are certain advantages of a video based lectures which i shall deal with right now so dear students one of the advantages which a video based lecture series has over a traditional textbook like brown world or harrison is see i can cardiology is a very visual subject you can in, incorporate a lot of images and you can write on these images for example i can highlight and show you the left atrial appendage uh, left atrial enlargement i can highlight and show you that there is lvh with strain on ecg on a standard diagram this is an av canal defect diagram i can show you where the cleft is i can write on screen and show you the pathogenesis this is not possible when you follow a standard textbook that's a limitation of textbook based learning so again this is a diagram from brown world i can write on this graph i can explain a bit more on this topic so this is my own diagram so i i draw i i drew these diagrams myself they might be ridiculous but it helps uh, your knowledge to stick this is based on the hemodynamics of tamponade again this is uh, based on this is pulses paradoxes what i'm teaching you on pulses paradoxes again this is not present in a standard textbook so this helps you learn much better so again my diagrams on hypoplastic left heart syndrome so again these are from my imagination so this is not in any textbook so it helps you learn a bit more so this is an echo of a pulmonary embolism again remember echo cannot be displayed on a textbook so you you need moving pictures to understand an echo a textbook might give you a link to a website or might give you a cd but again let's be frank how many of us actually go and look at it so again the images which are shown the videos which are shown can give you a complete learning experience so this is rarv dilation and this is thrombus on a uh, in the ra in pulmonary embolism so this is a paradoxical embolism in play you can see the thrombus squeezing across the uh, patent foramen ovale from the ra into the la so this is thrombus in transit again once you see this images it sticks for your entire life so again this is pulse this is uh, cardiac tamponade you can see the swinging motion of the heart within the pericardium this is responsible for your alternance so again electrical alternance again you see this you correlate with the ecg it sticks throughout your entire life so again this is something which a textbook cannot offer this is something which video lectures have a distinct advantage on so you know i've just uh, seen what i've said about the uh, limitations of textbooks so what's your opinion on that sir it's definitely true sir because uh, in cardiology actually you need to understand uh, things especially for uh, exams like uh, iniss where the options are very tricky and it absolutely uh, requires you to understand the concept very well so that uh, you don't get it wrong so i think understand is understanding plays an important role so only if you see, actually see these images uh, videos and all it will actually stay in your mind and concepts gets clear that is what i feel sir that is why i think i like these videos much and cardiology is a very visual subject it's uh, it's yes. not something you can go read in a textbook alone it's a very visual subject it yes. requires that you see patients you see images and that is one advantage of a video based uh, lecture you cannot you cannot reproduce a patient but the rest of the things you are able to do right? yes sir so uh, did you take marrow mock tests you had the grand tests of marrow did you attend those yes sir i uh, i took two exactly so uh, what was your rank and how much were you able to score in that sir uh, my first marrow test i got rank 7 uh, like it was uh, just immediately after i finished those videos uh, but my like uh, on the uh, the second mock test i got rank 1 sir ah exactly so when was that it was on december 1st that i gave the test exactly so some of those questions were actually set by me <laughs> so what was your approach to medicine what was your sir, approach to medicine medicine is yes. also around uh, let's say 30 questions came from medicine including statistics yes. So yes, what sir. was your approach to medicine did you was it was the uh, paper based on an harrison or an md standard exit level 
I cannot really tell that uh, those questions were picked up from Harrison, but definitely those concepts were there in uh, the videos or the marrow notes that were there in medicine, sir. Uh, but per se, medicine, I had not prepared much because I thought uh, most of the questions will be from cardiology. But actually, it was a surprise for us seeing more of medicine questions uh, in the examination itself. Exactly. Uh, so I think it is around 30 questions in medicine, including statistics. Yes, sir. Right. So yes, did sir. you prepare on statistics? Ah, yes, sir. I had read statistics part. That was uh, basically whatever we had read for our uh, PG entrance only. I had read, sir. Exactly. So community medicine is one thing that never leaves you. Right from your second year MBBS, it never actually leaves you. Yes. You have to be on your toes with respect to statistics. So let me ask you one thing. We've launched Maro about uh, six months from before. So yes. what is your uh, impression on Maro? Suppose you had got Maro in your first year of your uh, MD or in your second year of your MD, how would you feel about it? Would it make a world of difference at that time? Definitely, sir. I actually, even uh, like I did not use Maro. I could not use Maro during my PG preparation also because it was only then Maro had actually, Maro was coming. So even even so for super specialty also it was like that. I could not use it during PG uh, during my PG days. But then it was only after my PG this thing has come. Uh, but definitely it will be useful, especially uh, because this uh, the subscription contains all, all the video lectures in uh, all the subjects. So definitely, uh, for example, cardiology per se uh, during the PG days, since we see a lot of cases on acute coronary syndromes, uh, chronic coronary syndromes. Uh, atrial fibrillation, uh, pulmonary artery hypertension, pulmonary embolism. We usually uh, manage uh, based on uh, how much we learn from our seniors, but then uh, definitely they lack some clarity on why we are doing, why we are actually managing the patient this way. So, and and I don't think uh, the academics are very good in all colleges or all hospitals. So, especially uh, in the COVID times. Yes, sir. Especially during COVID times. Yes, sir. So. So actually watching these videos uh, will actually give a lot of clarity and uh, I think it will be really beneficial uh, for uh, PG students also. And coming to uh, congenital heart disease and the clinical cardiology videos, uh, definitely I think they are must to watch, uh, especially be before giving your uh, final year exams. Exactly, exactly. So remember, yes. concept is always king. We have a, we have this wrong notion that we enter into MD medicine that we have to finish reading Harrison. We have to yes. read Harrison about two to three times before we enter into a cardiology stream. We have to read Brownwald about two to three times. Remember, concept is king. It does not matter where you get the knowledge from as yes. long as it's accurate and complete. So again, all of you guys have a limited amount of time. So reading voluminous textbook is a bit of a difficult task for everyone. Not everyone can read Harrison. Not everyone can read Brownwall. But I, it is my impression that all of you guys can see these videos. Even if I give you a first year PG, he'll probably understand a lot and gain a lot from these videos. Would you agree, Dr. Inosh? Definitely, sir. Definitely. Exactly. So how, how useful is it uh, on the bedside? So that is what may, makes us happy. So how useful is this knowledge in treating a patient? Uh, sir, I think the videos are... Uh pretty much conceptual it includes the clinical features management it is it is not like uh, 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 a video which teaches a student uh, for an exam but it is more like a clinical thing so anyone anyone who's actually watching the video can learn a lot from that so one thing is that marrow is being advertised as a uh, neat ss coaching platform rather than that it's actually a pg learning platform or a PG teaching platform. It, we aim to uh, integrate a lot of specialties together so that you get a wholesome learning experience and ultimately it benefits your patient. So again, that's what we aim. So in the coming uh, months, we are going to include a case presentation so that it helps in your final year exams. We're going to include uh, ECGs. We're going to include marrow notes. So a lot of things are going to come up in the next few months. So keep on your toes. So uh, Dr. Enosh, you know the syllabus is changing, right? So yes. for you guys, you are lucky. You just needed to either study the same syllabus and you could write both NEET SS as well as INISS. But yes. uh, the next group of guys, either they have to focus on medicine or they have to focus on cardiology. Focusing on both is a little bit tricky. So what would yes. be your advice for the for your juniors? Um, I think uh, it. I think it's going to be really tough, sir. Uh, so what they have to do is uh, to. Uh, 
gain knowledge from all these videos like uh, if not all the videos i think there are really important topics that uh, one must absolutely watch uh, for giving uh, an entrance test so so i would recommend that sir actually so in my opinion see i i think it's only around 3 to 4 months of preparation is enough for cardiology as such yes, in sir. my opinion the rest yes, sir, of the yes. time i think it is better to focus on medicine keep your medicine concepts strong so if you are in your final year at least one year is required so if you are in your final year or one year that you are going to write your next year's exam i would suggest you focus around uh, uh, around 8 uh, 6 to 6 to 8 months on your medicine make it strong for cardiology around i think around maximum 4 months is enough you'll be able to complete all the videos and revise so that's what my opinion is so dr yes. enosh has finished uh, this cardiology seeing all the videos and even revising it and making notes in 2 months so yes. i think 4 months would be fine for any for an even average student right dr yes. enosh yes sir so again yes. bit of a tough fast so again focusing on medicine as such for your neat ss and focusing on subject wise as such in iinss it is truly a difficult proposition but remember knowledge is never wasted whatever you learn in your individual super specialty subjects will always stand you in good stead and also remember when you are even in your neat ss paper they are they are go they are not say that they going to ask questions based on harrison it is an md exit level so whatever subject knowledge you have you you have gained by seeing marrow by reading your standard textbooks always will stand you in good stead so uh, enosh any additional areas you would like to suggest for marrow to improve uh, i am not sure sir but maybe uh, basics about echocardiography because I, i just one question that was asked i am not sure uh, how much it will be helpful so that is a problem basics on echocardiography echocardiography is a huge top and it's practically very difficult to understand if you have not seen an echocardiogram mm. that's why i did not take it so again Uh, you you might lose one question but you have to spend a huge amount of time just to gain knowledge on echocardiography so that's why i decided not to include it so uh, any particular suggestions on in improving the interface of marrow or anything like that ah uh, interface is brilliant sir i don't uh, exactly. have any but suggestion ease of use was very good for you right if, yes, it, sir, if you yes. want to find a particular topic for example anything for example something like say inflammatory bowel disease if you want to know about that you could easily pick it up right from marrow yeah. yes sir because of the time stamp no exactly exactly so in cardiology would you like any additional topics to be covered we already said about echo so any additional topics to be covered sir uh, maybe the ecg discussions exactly so again uh, ecg is a huge topic you never quite finish learning ecgs yes, i have had the same i had different perspectives on the same ecg from when i was a house surgeon when i was an md when i was a dm and a problem electrophysiologist sees an ecg differently so we might come up in the next few months with an ecg learning course so i keep in touch so we'll probably do that also we aim to make it a wholesome course for your post graduation rather than a neat ss coaching program it should be a post graduate learning program so that you you it should be a must watch for any guy who joins as md medicine or md pediatrics that is what i what is what marrow dreams about actually so lastly what is your relationship with marrow been like so you have been with marrow from september so what was your relationship with marrow like so did you ask your doubts were they solved did you contact the marrow team so how was it <laughs> only person i contacted was you sir <laughs> so you were Sorry. available i mean available all the time to give replies so exactly and interface was very good so i did not have any complaints with marrow exactly so again uh, for for all these students watching it is very essential for you to be able to pick out a certain topic so if you want to learn on a certain thing the interface also has to be very good so that you can find a particular topic what you want to learn again marrow has a brilliant interface so with this we offer a lot of congratulations to enosh and uh, wish him very well in his cardiology journey and uh, may he uh, get all his dreams and uh, aspirations fulfilled so enosh where would you like to take your dm from uh, thank you sir uh, sir i would like to join jepper only sir jepper again jepper has a brilliant cardiology department i would say it's a very very wise decision you have done your mbbs your md from jepper you are now also going to do your dm from jepper again it's a uh, luck which very few of us have got that to study all three of your degrees in the same institution so wish you all the best enosh and keep in touch 
and all success in life so thank sure, you sir. thank you so much sir